It is my privilege today to talk to you about human factors and flight physiology. So first off, advances in technology have reduced the demand for human input, um, such as UAVs, which don't really need much human input at all. They can be programmed to do certain things. But human input and decision making is often crucial at some level. And so um, when designers and engineers make aircraft, they have to consider all parts of the human body, including its shape. Um, in designing of the aircraft. So that is where human factors come into play, and that's what this whole unit is about. So flight physiology, pilots and supporting crew provide the human dynamic for the flight, and the body and mind strengths and limitations impact the design and operation of the aircraft, including um, your field of view and your vision and your blind spots and all sorts of things, and your, you know, how far the arm can reach and where you can reach. So that's why switches and bars and pedals and windows and everything are designed exactly the way that they're, that they're designed. But with UAVs, unmanned vehicles, um, then it doesn't really matter as much. You don't need a cockpit, um, so it doesn't actually have to look the same. So things are changing. All right, more than 70% of aviation accidents and incidents are related to human factors. So there's a plug for UAVs. Uh, most accidents occur as a result of a series of incidents, small things that are happening that sort of lead up to the accident. The NTSB, which you're going to learn more about um, later on, is... Um, contains a wealth of factual information about aviation accidents, and you're going to study one in particular that you choose. That is a not-so-good day right there. So let's look at the shell model. Um, so a lot of these things you should definitely be noting down, this one especially. This is the interrelationship between human factors and the aviation environment. So shell stands for the following. Liveware in the middle, that is you. That is you as the pilot. If something happens to the liveware... Um, then there is going to be a problem between you and the software, between you and the hardware, between you and your environment, and between you and other people like the co-pilot or whoever in the plane. Um, so if something happens to the liveware, you got a big problem. If something happens to you, of course you got a big problem. Uh, if something happens to the hardware, then its only interaction generally may be with just you. Um, if something is wrong with the environment outside, there's a thunderstorm, then that's something that you have to deal with. But generally, the hardware and software um, may not be immediately impacted. So those are that's kind of the shell model relationship there. If there is liveware failure, which is incapacitation, um, then you may not be able to perform at normal levels. So here's some examples of liveware failure. Sudden. <laughs> Subtle. <laughs> Total. <laughs> Partial <laughs> distraction. Well, hello. Ah! Recognized. Oh, my wing's on fire. And unrecognized. Is my wing on fire? Let's look at the human body system. So um, all of the human body systems have to be taken in consideration when you're designing. And um, they impact aircraft and spacecraft design. So understanding these body systems helps aerospace engineers design safer vehicles. This is true not only with um, just basic flight vehicles within our atmosphere, um, but also for space vehicles. Human body systems is a huge component to um, understanding people in space travel. First, let's look at cardiovascular system. Um, so you might want to just note um, what the cardiovascular system does, and it maintains uninterrupted blood movement. So that's what we're uh, that's what we're doing. We're moving oxygen, carbon dioxide, nutrients, waste, and heart pumps blood into arteries, capillaries, and then tissues and cells. So cardiovascular system, your heart has to be able to pump uninterrupted. Uh, central nervous system collects, transfers, processes information to the brain and spinal cord. So if something is happening um, along this region then that's generally a bad thing. Musculoskeletal system supports bones, allows for movement. Um, it also provides your general framework and shape, which needs to be accounted for when you're designing, especially when designing spacecraft, where space within the pod is at such a premium. Um, figuring out how to cram people in is a really important thing, but you also need to be able to um, allow them to move and stretch. Respiratory system exchanges oxygen and carbon dioxide through or into and out of the bloodstream through the lungs. Um, and if you don't take this into consideration when you get up to high altitudes, you don't have oxygen. So then it has to be designed into the aircraft, some sort of um, respirator for extra oxygen. 
Metabolic system. Metabolic system is like the liver, the gallbladder, the kidneys. This allows all the body systems to work together, and it converts resources into substances, chemicals, and energy to just support the general brain and body activity. And vestibular system, this one is kind of cool. It's crucial for balance and spatial orientations, this inner ear thing. You've probably heard about this before. Um, you spin around in circles, and it kind of throws your body off a little bit. It has a huge impact on aviation because it helps to maintain orientation, but it can also give confused messages as to what your body's orientation is. Um, specifically, when you are in zero G, it really can throw you off because it makes you feel like, your body feels like, you're constantly falling when you're not. And so most people, when they are um, when they're first in zero G, uh, 70 to 80 percent of people um, will throw up. They will get sick over because of just that experience, um, your body not really being able to um, sort of figure out why it feels like it's always falling. But when your eyes look around, it doesn't look like you're falling. So it's that disconnect. And that was one of the cool things that I got to experience when I was on the zero G plane. I did not throw up. It was awesome. <laughs> There it is.